it can happen at any moment. You know, I believe that Jesus, the rapture will probably occur during the Feast of Trumpets some year. Jesus can come anytime he wants to. And we all always need to be ready for Jesus to return. If you're watching on YouTube and you're not a subscriber, go to endtimes.com, become a subscriber. $7 a month, $77 a year. We would love to have you become a subscriber. Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. I'm so glad that you've joined me today. I'm teaching, this is my fourth installment, uh, teaching from my book, Look Up, uh, Waiting the Rapture and Our Final Redemption. This is a very encouraging book talking about what happens when Jesus comes back. You know, Jesus told us to look up and lift up our heads when we saw these things begin to happen. Now, Jesus said, this is Luke 21, Jesus concerning the end times. He's answering a question now of when the end is going to come. And Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity. This is absolutely true today. We have unbelievable distress of nations today. Perplexity means there's no answers. The sea and the waves roaring, that means the sea and the waves in the Bible talks about nations. It talks about people. Could be talking about, you know, some kind of a global climate thing, but it talks about people. The sea and the waves roaring, people, there's unrest of people. That's true all over the world. Men's hearts failing them from fear. Uh, that word is phobos in the Greek for fear there. It, it means terror. It means fear and terror. This is happening. People are becoming overwhelmed with what's happening in the world. And the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. That means the demonic powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, Look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Now, the whole point of my book and the whole point of these teachings is I don't think we know what that means. When Jesus says, look up and lift up your heads, your redemption is drawing near. I don't think that we really focus enough on what the word redemption means because we can become so overwhelmed. And it's overwhelming what's happening in the world right now. I mean, it's just unbelievable the things that are happening. I'm going to talk here in just a minute about some things that are in the news. But it's incredible what is happening right now uh, in the world. Jesus said, don't be overwhelmed by what's happening around you. Look up. Look, get your eyes on heaven because you're about to be redeemed. Redeem means to buy back. It means you had something, you lost it, and now you're about to get it back. Well, Adam and Eve lost everything. But we're about to get everything back plus some. And it's unbelievable. I mean, it's incredible when you think of what's about to happen in the twinkling of an eye. And it, it can happen at any moment. You know, I believe that Jesus... The rapture will probably occur during the Feast of Trumpets some year. Jesus can come anytime he wants to. And we all always need to be ready for Jesus to return. But in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, we get everything back. And what I want to talk about today in this show is redeemed intimacy. I want to talk about getting our intimacy with God back. Now, Adam and Eve lost their immortality. They were immortal. They would have never died if they wouldn't have sinned. They had perfect bodies. They were in paradise, total pleasure, no pain. They had authority over the earth. Their home was in Eden until they got kicked out because of their sin. But they had the intimate relationship with God in the garden, incredible intimate relationship with God, and that's what they lost. I believe the most important thing that we're going to get back is the intimate relationship, the face-to-face -face relationship. Aren't you tired? Uh, praying to the ceiling or the wall or whatever. And I mean, prayer is very important, and I love to pray. I want to see Jesus' face. I, I, I want to have a face-to-face -face eternal relationship. Did you know that when we see His face, we will never be separated from Him again for all of eternity? And we won't have this invisible, you know, we're, we're told that we walk by faith, not by sight. That's until Jesus comes, and then we'll walk by sight. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, Now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also known. And so, and there are two very important elements to that scripture. The first is we will no longer have a frustrating, invisible relationship with Jesus. It'll be face to face. I mean, I'm just, it's, it's just incredible to think that, you know, we've lived all of our lives, all of us who are believers, we lived all of our lives loving Jesus and following Jesus and we can't see him. And so the other thing is we will no longer have any ignorance of who Jesus is. We will know him perfectly. We will know as we have been known. We'll have a perfect knowledge of Jesus. Think about that for just a minute, what that will be like. And even though Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins and to redeem our relationship with God, we've only received a down payment of our full redemption. Ephesians 1 says, in him you also trusted. 
after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the pur purchased possession to the praise of the Lord. He's the down payment. The Holy Spirit is the down payment that we receive when we get saved. But the fullness that we are going to get when Jesus comes is face-to-face, -face, intimate relationship with Jesus. Now, I want to say uh, to you, I know a lot of us are living in this world and we have pain. You know, we have frustration in relationships and just, you know, we just have so many things that we're lacking in this life in every area, but also relationally. Can I tell you that you'll never have another hurt? You'll never have another unmet need for all of eternity when Jesus comes. You'll never feel unloved again. You'll never feel rejected again. You'll never feel unimportant again. You'll never feel ostracized again. You'll never feel like you don't measure up again. You're going to be in a perfect body with perfect authority in an intimate face-to-face -face relationship with Jesus. Now, the point that I'm making now is really important because uh, you guys, I'm going to answer some questions here in just a little while on the subscriber portion of the show. One of the most important questions that we get is, will we know each other in heaven? Uh, will we know Jesus in heaven? I mean, how well will we know Jesus? Will he be like on the other side of heaven and we don't get to see him? We know he's there, but whatever. We will see him face to face and we'll have an intimate relationship with each other. But also we get a lot of questions of, will I know my mother in heaven? Will we know our relatives in heaven? Will we know our spouses in heaven and our children? You know, And, and there's a lot of anxiety. I know that a lot of people have of, will we be together as a family? Okay, in the Old Testament, when people died, it says they were gathered to their ancestors. They were gathered to their relatives. I absolutely believe that we'll be with our families in heaven, with our children, with our spouses, with our grandfather, with our mother, dad, all that kind of stuff. And so, <clears throat> but the question is, will we know each other in heaven? We don't know each other now. We really don't. I mean, you know, my wife and I, we've been married 50 years. In about three weeks, we celebrate our 50th anniversary. I think I know her as well as I could possibly know her. You know, every time I think I really know her, you know, she, she kind of surprises me. But, you know, we don't know each other now. We're guarded. It, it, you know, I don't know that I would be able to tell a person all about myself, even if I could. But there, there won't be any filters. There won't be any ego or anything. Won't, won't that be incredible? To be, You're never afraid to answer a question. You're never afraid for anyone to see into your soul, in, into the innermost being of who you really are. And so finally in heaven, we will know each other. Finally in heaven, we will know each other. See, some people have a concept of heaven that we're just kind of ghosts, uh, that we're floating around. We kind of have a lobotomy. You know, Jesus comes by, we kind of know him. Our mother passes us, we don't know her. And all that kind of stuff. That's just crazy. Is that on earth, this is where we don't really know people. And even, even though that sounds funny that, you know, we're kind of ghosts with lobotomies, that a lot of people have that concept of God and concept of eternity. We will finally know each other and it will be a perfect eternal knowledge of Jesus and each other. And we will be in a perfect relationship for all of eternity. Perfect peace, perfect love, perfect harmony. You'll know all your relatives personally. They'll know you and there'll never be another family fight. There'll never be another misunderstanding. There'll never be another, more, any more hurt feelings and things like that. And remember now, there is no devil. And our sin nature is gone. When we're in eternity, when Jesus comes, the instant that Jesus comes, it's over. I mean, we never have to deal with the devil again uh, the way that we do right now. No ego, no pride, no competition, no jealousy or envy or dysfunction, no past hurts or bad memories. We will all be able to fully love without fear for all of eternity. But most important of all, we will know God perfectly and be married to Jesus as, as his eternal wife. We'll have a face-to-face -face relationship. And so that's why Jesus said that we should look up our heads, lift our heads up and look up because our redemption is drawing near. Our perfect eternal relationship with Jesus could happen at any second. Let me read you Revelation 21 because this is talking about what we have to look forward to. It says, Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, 
adorned for her husband. Let me stop right there and say a lot of people say, well, New Jerusalem is the bride of Christ. No, New Jerusalem is where the bride of Christ lives. That's where we live with Jesus. We, we are in the New Jerusalem. We're the bride of Christ. Heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. So that's a picture of our full redemption. One great way to prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord is to experience where He walked. Pastor Ed Young and I are taking a group on a tour of Israel from November 29th through December the 8th, 2023. At every stop, we'll be telling you about the great things that God has done. But even more, you can experience what God is doing right now. Every time we've experienced this trip, God has revealed Himself to us in new ways, and He's gonna do the same for you. Sign up for this trip right now by going to endtimes.com. There's a link on the homepage that will give you all the information you need to become a part of this amazing trip. Sign up today. And so having said all that, I wanna, I wanna kinda answer some questions. A couple of questions uh, in this. And the first question I wanna answer is, why didn't I list knowledge? And, and the things that I talk about in Look Up or the things I've talked about is by, I've been teaching in this series, why didn't I list knowledge is one of the things that we get back. Now, we do get redeemed minds. That just means, you know, all the nonsense and junk is gone. But one of the things, Adam and Eve didn't lose knowledge. When they fell, um, they, I, I don't think they had a lot of knowledge, honestly. I mean, if they had a lot of knowledge, they wouldn't have done what they did. And so why, do, why don't I list knowledge is one of the things that we get redeemed when Jesus comes. And let me answer that and say, See, I don't think God gave Adam and Eve knowledge. I think God gave them himself. So, you know, these things that you have in your house, uh, Alexis or whatever it's called, that Alexa that you ask questions to, you can talk to. I think it's eerie, personally. I don't want one, one of those in my house listening to me, but I know people have them. And they ask you questions, you know, and it answers and stuff like that. Um, see, God, they didn't have an Alexa in the Garden of Eden. They had God himself. See, God loves being a father. He loves being a parent. And he could have zapped Adam and Eve with knowledge the way he gave them authority, the way he gave them eternal life, the way he gave them the Garden of Eden, all of those kinds. God could have just zapped it into him. That's not what he wants. He wants to be a father. He loves the journey as a parent. He loves to be needed. And so you have to understand God is relational. Uh, I, I was thinking to myself when I got saved, somebody told me, told me I need to pray. And one day I was praying, and it was hard. I, I didn't like it. And I remember thinking to myself one day, why does God make me pray? I mean, he already knows what I need. I mean, if he loves me, why didn't he just do it? Well, let me, let me explain. That would be like getting married and saying to your spouse, why do I have to talk to you? I mean, you know what I want. I've told you eight times what I want. Just do it. It's That would just take away all the joy of the relationship and you're together to meet each other's needs. You're together to have the journey of life with someone. God wanted a relationship with Adam and Eve as their father. He wanted them to come to him and say, you know, Lord, right over there, we saw this animal over there and we don't really know what's happening. Would you, would you help us out here? And he would say, absolutely. That's why he lived with them. He loves being a father. He loves being dependent upon. But see, the attraction of the forbidden fruit was instant knowledge. See, Satan told Adam and Eve, if you'll eat of that fruit over there, then uh, you'll know everything. You'll be like God, you know, understanding everything. And so they, so they took the fruit and they ate it. And of course they fell because they rejected the dependent relationship with God. God created us to walk in a totally dependent relationship with him. You say, how do you know that? Well, one of the uh, most common analogies in the Bible of our relationship with God is a shepherd and sheep. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. This is John chapter 10. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. 
The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. The wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. And so Jesus, Jesus is our shepherd. God is our shepherd. And sheep, so you say shepherd and sheep, well, sheep are totally dependent creatures. They can't navigate. You've never heard of a homing sheep. They can't bear burdens. You've never heard of a pack sheep. And they can't defend themselves. You've never heard of an attack sheep. Sheep are just these fluffy, cute little animals that absolutely, totally need a shepherd. They have to have a shepherd. And so that's who we are. When God looks at us, he knows that we can't navigate. We don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. We can't see around the corner. We can't bear burdens. I mean, we, we get stressed out so easy anyway, and we can't defend ourselves. I mean, not, not in the sense of without God, without spiritual authority. We can't. De- so God says, hey, let me be your father. See, the word that Jesus used that revol- re- revolutionized the world was father. When he, when he began to teach in Matthew chapter 6, in the Sermon on the Mount, he t- the Beatitudes, then he went into, he said, here's, all, here's how I want you to pray. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. He said, your Father knows everything you need before you're asked. Your Father, your Father. See, that concept really didn't exist in the Old Testament. God was a God on mountaintops with thunder and lightning and behind a curtain that you couldn't see. Only one man could see one time a year. But then in the New Testament, Jesus came in the flesh and he then revealed God in a very different way. God loves being our Father. Let me say it another way. So Jesus said, pray every day, give us this day our daily bread. That's one of the lines of the, of the Lord's Prayer. Have you ever just wanted God to give you just a whole bunch of money right now? I mean, have you ever thought to yourself, I wish I had enough money where I never had to pray again. I, I, I could just be independently wealthy for the rest of my life. Great. I mean, good. But did you understand that one of the reasons that God doesn't give us everything we want right now is because we wouldn't need him? I have my magic wand theory. Uh, If I could pass out magic wands to everybody and I could say to you, this is a magic wand. You can can do anything you want with this magic wand. It's magic. And if you'll take this magic wand and wave it over yourself, you can change anything you want to change. Okay. And here's what would happen. If you had a magic wand, and you could wave this magic wand and change anything in your life you wanted to change, when you were finished, you wouldn't need God. You'd be strong, you'd be healthy, you'd be rich, you'd be famous. You you would take every vulnerability and need in your life and you would wave it away and God would be unnecessary. That's exactly what the devil promised with the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And they went for it. See, I've learned in 50 years of following Jesus He loves being dependent upon. He loves me coming back to him every day and saying, Father, I'm trusting you today for more guidance. I'm trusting you today for more provision. I'm trusting you today for this. I'm trusting you today for this. And that's how our relationship with God grows. And so in heaven, we certainly will have the mind of Christ. We certainly will have tremendous amount of knowledge. But we'll be his wife. We will have this relationship with Jesus for all eternity where we're still dependent upon him to meet our needs, to, to be our God, to, to do the things for us that we cannot do for ourselves. Because we're not, we're not omnipotent when we go to heaven, but we're with the omnipotent one. And he will be there to take care of us. So mankind has always chafed at obedience, and that's the devil's open door. This is Isaiah 53. This is talking about Jesus coming to die for our sins. But listen to the reason it says that Jesus came to die for our sins. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. See, it's this despising dependence is the root of sin and why we're so vulnerable. The nature of sin, see, the devil came, the devil came, and he did something to Adam and Eve. And so they have God, they live with God, very God of very God. And he loves them. He lives with them in the Garden of Eden, and he'll answer any question. He'll do anything for them that they want because he loves that dependent relationship. And the devil comes to them and says, I'll, I'll, I'll make you a trade. I'll trade you something for someone. I'll give you a piece of fruit, and you won't need that guy over there anymore. And they, they took that deal. See, the devil's still making that deal. I'll, I'll give you success. 
I'll give you money. I'll, I'll give you popularity. I'll give you more followers, you know, over here. I, I'll give you anything as long as you don't have to depend on him. And so where relationship where intimacy with God comes from is loving our dependence upon God, embracing our dependence upon God. We need God and he loves to be needed. He loves me today. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I would hate it if my children or grandchildren didn't need me. I want them to need me. I want them to need me in a healthy way, but I want them to need me because I love being a father and I love being a grandfather. The devil's never had to change his strategy in deceiving human beings because it's still working. This is 1 John chapter 2. Do not love the world. Now listen, I want you to listen to the comparison here. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God binds forever. Can you understand there? So, so John is saying here, you can have the Father, or you can have the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That you can depend on the Father, and He'll give you provision, He'll, he'll bless you, He'll walk with you. See, understand this, the richest person in the universe wants to take care of you. The smartest person in the universe wants to guide you and take care of you. The most powerful person in the universe wants to protect you. All you have to do is depend on Him. Or you can turn to the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And this is what you see today. And John is saying, if you depend on this, you're not, you're not loving him. You're, you're not in relationship with him. And so God did not give us knowledge in the Garden of Eden because he gave us himself. And today it's the same way. See, every, every time I get a message, like this message that I'm teaching right now, I go through the same process. I have an office in my home. I sit down in my chair. And I pray and I ask the Lord to give me a message. I just say, Lord, lead me and give me a message. And I sit there until the Lord begins to speak to me. And I get that message finished and prepare it and teach it. And he gives me another one. He gives me another one. But what I don't have is this endless library in my mind where I can just you know, come up with a message like that. It's my relationship with God. He is the one who gives me guidance. He's the one who gives me the provision for everything that I do. He's the one... My relationship with God is everything. So we have today an intimacy with the Lord as much as we depend on Him. To the degree that we depend on Him is the degree that we have a, 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 an intimate relationship with Him. Now, I can't wait, and I'm so thankful for all that God has done in my life. I can't wait. He's the perfect Father. You have the perfect Father. And I say this to people sometimes when they didn't have a good father growing up. Stop grieving about the father you didn't have and start celebrating the fact that you have a perfect father today. God the Father is a perfect father. He loves you more than you'll ever comprehend. He wants to daddy you. And the good news is this. When Jesus comes, with all the things that are happening in the world, it is truly announcing the arrival of Jesus. With everything that's happening in the world, we are, I don't, I don't believe we're living in the last days. I believe we're living at the end of the end times, the last of the last days. And what I believe is, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to see Jesus face to face, and we will have this perfect intimacy with God, and we will know him as we have been known, and we will be his eternal wife, and he will take care of us for all of eternity. It's beyond anything that any of us can comprehend. But that's why, that's why I teach, that's why I wrote this book, Look Up. It's encouraging, is that, you know, I don't want to just write books about the end times and all the trouble that's happening in the world, though some of that's necessary. I want to write about what's about to happen when Jesus comes that we'll understand it's going to be incredible. It's going to be beyond anything that we can that we can comprehend in this life. So I hope that that's encouraging to you. Now, if you are a subscriber of endtimes.com, I want you to stay tuned because I'm going to talk about some things that are happening in the news. I'm also going to answer questions from our viewers. If you're watching on YouTube and you're not a subscriber, go to endtimes.com, become a subscriber. $7 a month, $77 a year. We would love to have you become a subscriber. If you are a subscriber, stay tuned. Now, you can't watch the entire program on YouTube. You have to go to endtimes.com to watch the entire program or respond to the email that we sent you. If you're a subscriber, stay tuned.